Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my interview with Ronnie Martin that I did at Audio Feed 2023 earlier this summer. It was a, a great honor to be able to do this, especially since I had been such a fan for such a long time, like since I was a kid, honestly. And sorry, Ronnie, for making you feel old. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the interview. Also, be sure to check out the other interview that I did at Audio Feed this year with Becoming the Archetype. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and if you like what you watch today, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Also, if by any chance you haven't already, go check out Ronnie Martin's music for sure and go check out uh, Joy Electric and all the other music that he's involved in. Anyways, let's just get on with the interview. Again, enjoy. Okay, everybody. We got Ronnie right here. Let's give it up for Ronnie Martin. So uh, glad, glad that you can make it. And we, uh, this is a little, we're just like meeting for the first time, like within the past five minutes. So we're going to get over that hurdle as, as best we can. But uh, first things first, how are you, Ron? I'm doing good. Yeah? I've been, I've been driving all morning. Have you been driving by, by yourself? Been, no, I've been driving with my, my crew over there. Okay, gotcha. So it's, uh, it's been good, but yeah, we are just coming in hot, so. Nice. So, uh, the traffic, like, pretty crazy or whatever? I mean, you know, you're going through all these kind of weird highways through yeah. small towns, and yeah. you get a lot of hang-ups, right? So, right, yeah. yeah. And we got a lot of stupid Illinois construction, you know. That's just Illinois for you. But, uh, yeah, awesome. So, in case there's... Some people here who might not know who Ronnie Martin is. I mean, I don't know why you're sitting here, but uh, Ronnie Martin is uh, best known under the moniker uh, Joy Electric, you know. <laughs> Staple in the, in the tooth and nail uh, history, which I'm sure people have said this before, uh, but that's got to be like one of the most punk rock things ever, is just to like join a record label that's mostly known for punk rock and then you're you're coming in with your with your music with this uh i don't know if you would call it like edm or just electronic music and uh so that's that's just crazy so like what 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 was that like exactly just like you starting your music and you getting into into tooth and nail that way um that's a great question it, it was lonely i can tell you that much <laughs> yeah. um I, you know it was disorienting at times yeah. Because, you know, you want to talk about outliers, and we were kind of the outliers yeah. on the label. We kind of liked that, too, right. a little bit. Um, but I think what helped us was that the owner of the label uh, had really eclectic tastes. Yeah. And so he liked a lot of different styles of music. It wasn't just punk and hardcore. He loved all that. Right. But he also loved um, just a lot of different things. Yeah. And so um, we were just... And we kind of filled a, a void of, you know, of music that he liked, that he wanted to support and put out. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it took, a, it took a minute for um, everybody to stop laughing at us <laughs> and um, to, to begin to get invited to these types of things. Sure, yeah. So first couple of years were a little, little barren. Yeah. And then um, we sort of received some you know, increasing acceptance. And then um, people weren't laughing. Maybe they were just winking and nodding at us, but they were less laughter. You know, and uh, so then we, we became a little more part of the club. Sure. So just, yeah. they just kind of accepted you, the black sheep of the family. Yeah, <laughs> so. I mean, because you know, you, I mean, you, right? I mean, because you know, we we added a little spice to the mix. I think so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So awesome. Um, I'm gonna skip way ahead from that period because these are the questions that are burning on my mind personally, and I'm sure for many others here. So you went on. So. You did Joy Electric for, I don't know, like 15 years or so. Um, and then all of a sudden, you stopped. Uh, I don't know, back in 2008 or something like that. Uh, and, and you got into to ministry and such. So, so what, what, was, what was all that about? <laughs> you know? uh, what, was, what did that look like for you just kind of deciding not to do music anymore and then to go into ministry like that. Yeah. Um, well, since Joy Electric is primarily just me, I can't 
break up, you know. So <laughs> yeah. it was. I mean, um, not with that attitude. I mean, you can't <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, we'd been going, and I, I always say we, but you know, uh, but it, the project had been going for a long time, right? And we were pretty consistent with doing an album and an EP a year, you know, all those years. And um, yeah, as as I was kind of, as the Lord was kind of bringing me into ministry, there just the, the time wasn't there. We were kind of we're kind of leaving our place in the music industry and just kind of moving more into a ministry role. And um, um, it just it needed to be put on the shelf for a little while. Sure. And we did an independent record in 2012 called Dwarf Mountain Alphabet. Woo! And uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, and then, um, yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been, you know, I've been in seminary getting degrees and doing sure. a bunch of other stuff, right? Right. And uh, doing ministry, planting a couple of churches, being involved in, in that whole sphere. And then uh, a few years ago, um, got my studio all back, rebuilt, back mm -hmm. into place, and it was just time. And yeah. so, um, you know, had a bunch of songs. COVID hits, had a bunch of time, yeah, yeah, and then, you know, recorded the solo album, and that was kind of the, you know, kind of getting back into it all, right. which we're, here we are now, but yeah, and that's the shortest history I've ever, that's the <laughs> tightest sure. historical perspective I've ever given, so thanks I mean, for, you, you can take your thanks time, for shutting yeah. me up a little bit, you know. No, no, it's, it's all good, I mean, like, um, so, I guess, um, so that, that's kind of the common theme, because I, I talked with the, the guys with, from uh, Becoming the Archetype uh, yesterday, and that was kind of the similar thing where they weren't doing music for, for 10 years, and then, like, COVID happened, and then, like, all of a sudden, you know, starting getting ideas again, and it's like, oh, man, it's, uh, it feels like it's, it's time, like you said, to, to do so. I, I, I've heard lots of stories about that with people, like, during COVID, like, oh, well, let's get the band back together again, you know, so, but... Um, what did, um, so what brought you into ministry? I mean, a little bit, maybe more specifically than like just God leading you into that. Was that always kind of a passion for you, even while you were doing uh, music? I mean, of, of course, but like how, how long was that for you and, and uh, what did that look like? Yeah, no, it, it wasn't really. Um, you know, we were, you know, during all of our, you know, kind of the height of all of our touring years and, and all of that, um, you know, we, we're always always anchored in the local church, mm -hmm. so that was always you know important and a and a priority for um, you know, for my brother and I'll speak for him, right? And yeah. A little bit, and um, so we we always had that anchor, and then um, yeah, at some point, um, I I think what happened was um, I I really got anchored in a really good church, and because uh, we'd made a uh, we moved, found a new church, and I think the big change for me was I had some. Um, I had some pastors at this church that just knew who I was, you know, because of all the music stuff, and um, and they they kind of approached me, they pursued me, and took me out to you know asked me to go get coffee with them, yeah. and they asked me some really good questions along the lines of what are you doing with your life, you know, and I said, well, I, you know, I, I, what do you mean, you know. <laughs> um, I'm, ma I'm making music. I'm, you know, I'm Joy Electric. I'm Joy. You know, I'm, I, I write, I write silly songs. You know, and, um, and they said, well, no, you know, we, we see that you have a heart for the Lord, and but the, you you seem like you know you seem like you lack focus in your life. They they saw this in me, you know, because sure, I'm still yeah. doing a lot of shows, and we're still kind of in, on that, you know, kind of on that um, all that momentum, and you're st you're just kind of in the midst of, you know, on that sort of that wheel, you know. Right. And I felt like things were changing. I'm getting a little bit older, and um, and they just started challenging me in a really good way. Yeah. And um, and then my um, my dad died in 2007, mm. and it was very sudden, and it was um, it was just an incredibly life changing moment for me. Sure. And the Lord really used that to sort of allow me to step back, and just consider like, hey, w look around you, open your eyes. And, um, you know, quit living your life um, as somebody who has Jesus kind of, you know, lodged somewhere like a book on your shelf, mm -hmm. and he's there when you need him. Right. And, um, and you need to, uh, you need to, uh, you need to repent, and you need to, uh, you need to rethink about the trajectory of your life. And so it was, it was a moment for me, 
And, um, and these guys, again, these guys that have really just kind of reached in very lovingly into my life um, ended up being the catalyst for just some really good changes. Yeah. And, um, and before I knew it, you know, it's like, you know, ministry is you're all of a sudden they're asking you to do things. And you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. And then two weeks later, you're doing three things, you know. <laughs> yeah. And um, one thing led to another. And, you know, I'm just involved in all this ministry stuff and mm-hmm. heading into seminary. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's too long of a story. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, here we are almost 20 years later. Right. And um, all, this, all this stuff, yeah, which included a move from California to Ohio. Mm-hmm. Like I said earlier, planning a couple churches and all this craziness. Sure. Yeah. So sorry if that was a long answer. No, no, yeah. I mean, you, I, I'm just here to let you talk, so that's uh, that's totally fine. So, so you're doing ministry for a while. Um, did did you ever think that you would go back into doing music again, or was that just kind of off the shelf for an indefinite amount of time, or were you kind of hoping that maybe one day that you would have the time to to do that again? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, we had ended our contract with Tooth & Nail, I think, around, uh, you know, uh, 2011 or 2012 or so- something like that. And um, so we just we just called it. We called it quits. And um, so I think the intention was always, you know, I, I, you know, I want to make more records. Right. But it needs to be the right time. And I want to I do something that is going to, you know, represent kind of some of these new songs that I'm thinking through and I'm writing. And um, yeah. so it's just really waiting, waiting for the right, like, mental space right. to be able to, like, re-engage. And the Lord just didn't have me in that place. And for once in my life, I was trying to listen to that, you know. Right. And, um, and just wait. I'm not very good at waiting. And uh, <laughs> so I, I, I needed to wait. And I was still doing other stuff, but it just wasn't the right time. And then uh, Jeff from Velvet Blue approached me, and we talked about, hey, what it would look like to to do another record. Right. And um, I said, well, I go, I, I, you know, I've gotten into the publishing industry, so I'm writing books now. I go, I don't really right. want to do Joy Electric. I'd rather just be my name. Yeah. I said, if you're interested in that, and he said, I am. And so one thing led to another, you know, how, the, how those things go. So. Gotcha. That was actually one of the questions that I had, is like, why drop Joy Electric altogether and just go as Ronnie Martin now? Yeah, I know. It was probably the dumbest thing I ever did. Um, <laughs> Well, your true fans are like, oh, Ronnie Martin, Joy Electric. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I could have just put, put the name on there. Would, nobody would have thought anything of it. I, you know, I wanted, to, I, wanted to move, I wanted to very subtly move a little bit past that sound I'd been kind of promoting and building on for all those years. And I wanted to widen the sound quite a bit and do right. something a little more big and cinematic and something that really, you know, um, I think better represented the kind of songs that I write. Sure. You know, and um, it, it can't be craft work all day, all night, you know. Right. And um, so I wanted to do something a little, little, little bigger, a little wider. And I thought, you know, I'd rather it just be like a blank canvas, blank, yeah. you know, just clean slate. Mm-hmm. And uh, just using the name felt like that. It gave me right. a little more motivation. Um, I think that's the best answer I have. You know, it was. No, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't incredibly complex. It was like, hey, I just want to use my name. Sure, yeah. yeah. It's like. Yeah, because that's um, because I, I got to say you you released uh, which by the way probably is up there for like one of the longest album titles ever. But from the womb of the morning, the dew of the youth, the dew of your youth will be yours. I literally couldn't have said that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did my best, um, but uh, it's I got to say it's it's fantastic. Um, Thank I'd, you. I got to say it's it's probably. Uh, ju- just as good, if, if not better, than, than anything that you, you did through Joy Electric, in, in my personal opinion. Um, do you think that, um, you know, we're talking about your time in ministry, do you think, how, how much did that really inform your, your, your new music, like From the Womb and all, all the other recent stuff that you've been doing? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I th- the idea I had was I... I uh, I've really immersed myself in the Psalms over the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. And so I usually read through those and about, a, I just kind of cycle through those constantly well, as well as other scripture, but yeah, the Psalms kind of have a, have a cycle in my life as a way to help me pray right. and teach me how to pray better. And, um, and the song, they're incredibly beautiful and they're incredibly poetic. And there are times when they're also incredibly abstract. Mm-hmm. 
um, because they use language that we don't use as you know use in you know America, right? right yeah. <laughs> um, and so I really like abstract lyrics. And um, as I was reading through the Psalms, I, I, my idea was, what if I, what if I did some records based on that and sort of do sort of like take a, do a more abstract rendition of the Psalms, yeah. you know, in that sense, and ma- mainly taking just some of the feeling, some of the angst, some of the darkness, some of the sentiment mm-hmm. behind those Psalms, but kind of putting my own sort of like abstract take on it without perverting scripture, you know, it, right, was, yeah. it was more of like an impressionistic thing, like a, what a painter would do. Sure. And so that was the idea with that. Mm-hmm. And even with that title, which yeah. is that title is just, it's a mind blowing. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a, it, again, if you read the English standard version, like I do, that's how it's written out in the ESV. Sure. And it's just, it's a mind blowing um, line. Yeah. You know, a lot and, packed um, into it. A lot packed into it. it. It's and it's about book length as well. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so that was kind of the idea behind that, as well as you know, kind of these subsequent albums I'm I'm working on right now is to kind of base it in wisdom literature. Yeah. And um, see what kind of comes out as I, you know, unpack that in my own life a little bit. But sure. Yeah. Awesome. So, talking more about um, faith, uh, and your I mean, of course, you know, you're you're in ministry and such. Um, I think uh, a lot of people here would probably notice that, I guess, your, your generation of, of, of musicians, that kind of era with, like, tooth and nail, you hear so many stories of, like, a lot of people from that era, you know, leaving the faith, you know, making, you know, going down a different path, which uh, I kind of asked a similar question uh, yesterday to becoming the archetype, and uh, I know there's a lot of people here, both musicians and attendees, who come from different, you know, walks of faith. Maybe they don't; they're not even on that road. Um, since you hear so many stories, it's for me as a Christian, it is refreshing to hear people who you know are still on that path. So I'm I'm just curious, what has what has kept your your faith strong? And you know, I guess like how. How has it changed? How has it strengthened? And uh, uh, what's kind of kept you on that path? You know. Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a good question. It's a hard question to answer. I think in in some ways, um, you know, um, you know, I think you're seeing a lot of these guys deconstruct right now, which I don't think is is necessarily a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's impossible to deconstruct and not reconstruct into something else. Right. So you, you, nobody deconstructs into neutrality. You're deconstructing into another construction, right? right? And I, I think, um, and I've had conversations with other artists, and you know, um, I think it's probably a good thing to look around at maybe the culture you were raised in. Maybe some of it was wounded you. Maybe some of it damaged you. So for sure, I think we need to, I think we need to have those conversations. I think we need to be patient. I think we need to listen. Because I think some people came out of some of these subcultures that were created in evangelicalism over the last 30, 40 years, and there's stuff there that, that wasn't great, right? you yeah. know? Um, and I think to, um, to be patient with people that are in that journey, I think is really important. And um, I think just the encouragement that, um, you know, we... You know, whenever we're part of, whenever we're part of, a, of a culture that really in some ways... You know, the, the, the Lord has had his hand in, but people can also, you know, kind of take some of it and shape it in a way that's not healthy. Right. It's, it's always really important to recognize what, what that is so that we don't confuse that with, you know, the, 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 the trueness of who Jesus is. Right. You know, and so, um, you know, we've all ha- we all have stories of how the church probably has, you know, done things or not acted in a way that aligns with who we know Jesus to be. Yeah. Church, church. Um, but we don't want that to change our 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 vision and our and our understanding of who Jesus is, you know. And I think that's difficult to do, you know. And I think I think the Lord can really work through that process yeah. if we're open to saying, "Hey, I, I I do need to unpack some things because I'm not sure about that and I'm not sure about that, but I am sure about you." Mm-hmm. So when I understand what I understand about you is that you are unchanging. Mm-hmm. What I understand about you is it might not be what I've learned about you from other people who didn't represent you very well. Right. I, don't, I want to be able to differentiate um, those things. I think Tim Keller said, um, sh- show, me, show me the Jesus 
um, that show me, the, I'm going to butcher this, but he said, show me the Jesus that you don't care for very much. And I probably, I might agree with you, mm-hmm. but, but it might not be the real, the Jesus of scripture, right? right. Who is gracious and loving and compassionate. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and, and has healing, mm-hmm. you know, for us in, through these things that right. are probably going to be a process. Right. You know? I don't know if that answered your question. But. No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I think a common story that I hear from uh, a lot of those artists was that, like, you know, they, they, got, they were on the road. They, kinda, like, they felt like they got into the real world, and, you know, that kind of changed things for them. But um, so was, was that ever a challenge for you, like, being in that, that industry and facing a lot of those a lot of, I guess, like hypocrisy or whatever, and just meeting different people, meeting different people of different beliefs and such. Was that was that ever a challenge for you? Um, I, yeah, I don't. I would say that that probably wasn't the thing that I struggled with mm-hmm. um, as much as, um, you, you know, I would say, I, you know, I, I would say my struggle was more like self righteousness, mm. and um, you know. Uh, rather than seeing something that looked like it was broken and it was falling down, it made me lose hope and faith in Christ. Yeah. It, was, it was probably more of the, of the reverse of that, which is like, I, I will not fail, <laughs> yeah. and I am holding to the faith, sure. and I will not collapse. When in reality, you know, um, there were things in my life that were incredibly nominal mm-hmm. and um, that would not have looked sort of like, I'm turning my back on the Lord. I'm pushing against Christian culture. I'm angry. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the flip side of that, in more of a pharisaical way, that probably would have been more my story, mm. which is how the Lord sort of had to. So I, I wasn't, I, I may have not been the prodigal son. I was more like the older brother. Sure. Which yeah. is really what that story is about. Yeah. And so the Lord really had to reach in and do some serious work. And there, had, there was some serious repentance. Sure. There still is, you know, in my life with all those things. Yeah. Awesome. Well, th- thanks for your for your honesty so much. Uh, I wanted to get back into more of the kind of the music side of things, kind of switching gears here. Uh, but I, I really appreciate those answers. But so throughout your discography, like as, as Joy Electric, uh, you've always had almost like a sort of like purist attitude when it comes to like the, the music with the instrumentation, like using Mostly, if not all, analog synths, no computers, no organic instrumentations, at least for the most part, as far as I can recollect. But uh, did you have a, a different approach with, with your more newer music, like from, from the womb and your, your other most, most recent projects? No, it, it, it's still, I, I just, it, it's funny because there's this like duality to what I do, which is, I was talking to my crew about this earlier. I, I'm really just a songwriter at the end of the day. Right. And, but the problem is that um, I don't really enjoy acoustic music very much. Um, uh, so I, I write making all... making people upset. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, don't, I listen to a lot of it. I just don't, I don't, have a, I don't enjoy making it as oh, much. Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, I think what's hard for me is I, just, I like synthetic sounds. And um, so the, the idea has been, you know, um, how do I... How do I translate all my folk songwriting, which is all it is, because I write it all on piano? Right. How do I translate it with all these mugs, you know? And so the juxtaposition is that occasionally it works, a lot of times it doesn't work, mm-hmm. but it's the only thing I have any interest in doing. Sure. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, no, it's, uh, no, still, it's still 100% uh, analog sense. So I'm sticking to the formula. No, yeah, I, I, I love that. Uh, I, I do since I mean I'm not as much of an auteur as you, but um, I I've always kind of had an appreciation for uh, synths and such. And uh, one thing I noticed about uh, from the womb is that like it's a lot more it's a lot more big and bombastic. Like the the drums, or if you can call them drums, uh, are a lot more bigger. So was that like a, uh, an intentional kind of uh, approach with this new album? Yeah, I, I think you know. I, I'm, I'm a big chorus writer. I write choruses. So all my songs start out as choruses. Sure. And I like big choruses. I like things to just come in, you yeah. know. Um, and so I, I, wanted to, I wanted to do something that would support that, mm-hmm. to where the choruses would actually come in big. Right. Um, so not get too bogged down in the music to where it kind of hurts some of that. Mm-hmm. 
So this was an opportunity now to say, hey, I got these courses, and I, I want to just make them as wide and as big as, as possible. So, yeah, I was able to do some, some things while still sticking to the formula right. and, and try to make that happen at least. But yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's, it sounds like Joy Electric, but it's, it's fresh, you know. That's what, that's what I Thank love you. about it. Um, so, so you released uh, From the Womb. Uh, you released uh, also an instrumental, uh, I guess, album of two, like, 20-minute tracks. Uh, and you released a, a Christmas album. And I think I saw you mention that you're already working on another Christmas album. So, like, what else are, are you working on right now? You have, like, a lot of ideas going around now. Yeah, so I, I finished another Christmas album. Sorry. I'm sorry. Awesome. It's not Christmas without, without Joy Electric or, or Ronnie Martin. Well, I, that's nice of you to say. Um, I, st I think the holiday still works without me. But um, no, that's coming out this November. And um, it's a little more, uh, you know, it's, it's a Christmas album. It's drums and choruses and the whole thing. So it'll sound very much like kind of what the last album was in some ways. And then, yeah, just um, recording the second full length. So I'm in the middle of all that uh, right now. So, nice. yeah, a lot of stuff. And um, it's excited to be doing it. It's been, been really fun. Yeah. Kind of re-energized for it. And um, just enjoying the songs and the songwriting like I always do. And uh, I, ha I just have a lot of time to, to work on it now. And uh, so it's nice, yeah. Yeah, I guess all that time, taking a break from all that, now all of a sudden he's ideas are just like coming out like like nothing else that's that's awesome so are, are you also planning on doing like a lot of like shows like i know you're, you're playing here at audio feed but like is like live shows really something that um that you really like to take a lot of time into that time and energy yeah i not so much i think you know i i think going back to you know life 15 years ago in terms of that is not incredibly appealing yeah. Um, doing things like this is super fun, mm -hmm. but I think just sort of that we we did so much back in the day, and so yeah, I don't I don't think there's any plans to go go back to that. But I think doing you know one off yeah. things like this is super fun. So yeah. No, yeah, I got super excited when when I saw that they added you to this, and I'm like, I I gotta interview Ronnie, because uh, honestly, I've I've been a fan since like the first memory that I have of Joy Electric, I must have been like. Six or seven years old, honestly. And I'm uh, feeling feeling old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I'm still feeling young, so if that makes you feel better, um, it doesn't. But <laughs> my uh, my dad was a pastor growing up, and um, their youth. This was back in the day when youth groups used to get um, VHSs of like a collection of music videos and such. You you guys probably remember. And it's just like a whole sample of stuff. And that's kind of, that was kind of like one of the catalysts that like got me into a lot of like CCM and such. And I remember, because like my sisters, my older sisters, they would bring them home sometimes and, and we would watch them. And there's this music video for uh, Monosynth. Yeah. These, <laughs> these two guys in this weird makeup singing this weird music. And I'm like six or seven years old. And I'm just like, this is, this is different. <laughs> this uh, interests me a lot, though. It's, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued. So, and like ever since then, uh, just kind of followed you guys. And uh, I also remember, I don't know if anyone remembers the Happy Christmas albums that Tooth and Nail used to do, like here in like Lollipop Parade and such. So. Christmas music, obviously. A, Thanks a for saying that with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I still love that song. That that song is a jam. But uh, um, yeah, so big history right here. So um, uh, it's it's really a, an honor to be able to Thank be you. talking to, to be. you. What's that? Honor to be talking to you. Oh yeah, on, uh, uh, this has been awesome. So uh, yeah, all right. Well, I think uh, I think that'll do it. Unless uh, you wanted to go ahead and. Um, plug some stuff, you know, where can people find you, follow you, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, all the, all the, the new stuff's on velvetblemusic.com. Uh, RonnieMartin.org is the website. It has all the books and the music. And, uh, yeah, I mean, all the, all the available digital, you know, outlets and... All, all the places. A, 
you know, got all the formats coming out this Christmas, vinyl, cassette, CD, you know, so all that fun stuff. So, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And when are you playing tonight? Uh, what time is that? At 10? 10. 10.40. 10 10 40. There all right. we go. <laughs> They're keeping track for 10 you. 10.40. <laughs> cool. So, and uh, is that at the, what stage is that? That's the... Uh, that one over there, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So you guys be sure to, to check that out. Check out. Right, so you're playing new stuff and old stuff. It's a good mixture. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So be sure to, to check that out. I'll, I'll be sure to, to be there as well. So uh, thanks for doing this. Thanks, uh, Clifford. Thank yeah. You, this, is a, this is a new thing uh, that Audio Feed has been gracious enough to let me have a microphone and talk to artists and embarrass them, you know. So, uh, so it's, a, it's a real pleasure. So uh, thanks, man. Thanks, brother. Give it up for Ronnie. Thank you. So, uh, and uh, just a reminder for you guys, um, if you happen to like the way that I asked questions today, um, I have my own YouTube channel. It's called uh, I'm Clifford Today. It's where I talk about uh, things having to do with uh, Christian music and such. Last year, I did a documentary on last year's audio feed. So I do stuff like that. I've got a table over there uh, with some shirts and such. So uh, come over and uh, have a conversation with me. And uh, this, uh, as long as it's OK with you, we recorded this conversation. So this will probably be up on the YouTube channel if that's OK with you. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Right? Like, like, you better say yes. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, you guys have a, a great rest of the festival. Thanks again, Ronnie. All right. See you guys. <laughs>